What's up YouTube? It's your old Uncle Ben here with another guitar lesson for you guys. Uh, today I would like to talk about how to play the guitar solo to Symphony of Destruction by Megadeth. Definitely one of Marty Friedman's best solos that he laid down while he was with the band. Uh, I put up a cover video of this a couple weeks ago and I had a bunch of requests for a lesson video to follow it. So I thought I would give the people what they want show you guys how to play this solo. So what we'll do is we'll slowly break it down into a couple of different sections. A lot of it's not too bad. Um, there's a few licks in there that are pretty tricky that we'll spend some time on, but a lot of it's not that bad, especially the first part and the last part of the solo. Nothing too crazy. Uh, the real star of the solo, as usual for Marty's stuff, is his uh, just general feel on the guitar. You know, his pick attack is monstrous. Uh, his vibrato and his bends are really, I think, what makes the solo cool. That's the hardest stuff to imitate, too. You know, anybody can sit down with a metronome and get the fast stuff down. But uh, really capturing his feel for his bends and his vibrato, that is a super, super challenge. Um, so as you're uh, learning these licks, be sure to listen really closely to the original. Listen to how quickly he uh, does a bend or how slowly he does a bend. And his vicious, just awesome vibrato. So be sure to listen really closely to that stuff. So that's what makes the solo cool. Okay, first things first, I'll just play through the solo really slowly. Uh, for a lot of you more advanced players, that's the best lesson I could give, is just to play something slowly and you can pick it out yourself. So first I'll just play through it slowly, and uh, then we'll start breaking this down lick by lick, okay? So I'll just play through it right here. Scoot up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so you can really pick those out. If you're a more advanced player, you can probably just uh, listen to those licks, watch me play them, and figure it out on your own. Uh, but for the rest of you human beings, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to play the rest of these licks and stuff. Okay, uh, so let's start off with the first part of the solo here. He's going to be sliding into fret number 9 on his G. Uh, that is an E note. And what you do is you're going to slide into that, and for the first measure, you're just picking on it. Four times. Heavy vibrato. Here's the next lick. You're going to slide in again. Slide down to 7, up here I'm on the 9 on the D, that's immediately followed by the 6th fret on the G, with just a half step bend, so it goes like this. Next 
actually going to do fret 5 on the B, fret 7 up here on the G. It's just going to be one of those unison bends. I'm keeping the 5 on the B held down, the 7 on the G I bend up a whole step. I pick them both at the same time, like that. That's immediately followed by 3rd fret on the G. Slow half step bend. That's a Marty Friedman trademark. You'll hit a, a note that's actually out of key, but just slowly bend it up into one that is in key. It's so cool. It's like it sounds raunchy for just a second, and then it sounds cool, you know? Okay, so here's the first section. Unison band. Next is this open position stuff. That would just open. Second, open, second, half step bend, another half step bend. Okay, next you're gonna hit that second G again and do a half step bend. Open G, second D, open G, second D again. section. Now we get into the first challenging lick right here. This is sort of a kind of like an A minor 6 arpeggio. It's like a A minor but with an F sharp note thrown in there too. Kind of sort of. This is cool. Uh, let's break this into two sections. The normal rhythm section and the weird rhythm section. Uh, Friedman's phrasing is so cool. Uh, sometimes he does a lot of like straight 16th note stuff like how he starts this lick and then he breaks into this more arrhythmic sort of feel. It's really hard to capture that stuff but we'll try. So here's the first section that's just straight 16th notes. You're going to slide in to fret number 10 on your D string. Over that C note right there. Follow that up with fret 9 on your G. Hammering on to fret 11 on the G. Do the same lick again after that, just leave out the slide in. So now we have slide in, no slide in. Follow that up with going to fret 10 here on the B. Hammer on to fret number 13. A and C right there. Now we have slide in. Next play fret 12 on the E. Notice I'm using my middle finger. This will be important here in a second. Go back and play the two notes you played on your B a second ago. Fret 10 and 13. Now, after you play that, it's going to be followed by fret number 12 on the E again. But this time, instead of using your middle finger like you did a second ago, you're going to have to shift up and use your pointer finger. That's important to make the next uh, sequence playable. That was that phrase there. So I hit 12 on the E with my pointer finger, hammer on 14. Pull off the 12, fret 13 on your B, back to that 12 on the E again. That ends the straight 16th note portion of the lick. Let's try it one more time. So I slide in. Change positions right there. Thankfully, there's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs that do the work here for you. Marty's not like a, uh, you know, Paul Gilbert type, like alternate pick everything kind of guy. I guess he does have some stuff that's pretty sick, though. Some of that Tornado Soul stuff is nasty. But in this case, a lot of his, uh, a lot of his power is coming from his hammer-ons and pull-offs, not a lot of picking. Okay, so that ends the straight 16th note portion. Here's the weird portion of the lick. <laughs> I'm starting off here on fret number 14 on the E, that's my F sharp note, and what you're going to do is go ahead and have 12 held down back here too, that E note, go ahead and have that held down, so you're going to use it here in a second. 14, hammer on to 7, uh, 17, I'm sorry, hammer on to 17, then just rip off those other notes. So it's like 14, 17, 14, 12. Follow that up with fret number 13 here on your B. After that, slide all the way up here to fret number 20, 
That's your high C note on your high E string here. Here's this leg. 20, 17 on the E. Just hammer on and pull off of that 20. So it's, then you gotta have 19 on your B, 21 on the G, end with 17 on the G. So we start off by sliding into 20, then we had a little hammer on and pull off, 17, 20, 17, 19 on the B, 21 on the G, 17 on the G. Okay, so just to review that entire uh, A minor 6 kind of sequence goes. Weird section. That rhythm was a little funky right there, a little bit off. It's kind of hard to play that slow down, you know? Okay, I hope that's good so far. Let's go ahead and look at these next licks right here, these kind of fast, sort of rapid fire arpeggios. Very Jakey e. Lee kind of sound, you know? Okay, so here I'm starting off on fret number 12 on the B, pulling off to fret 10. We're gonna play 12 on the G, then back to 10 on the B. Then you play that lick again. So, so far we should have this. Here's the next section of the lick. I'm still maintaining pressure on this 10th uh, fret B note down here, the A note. You're going to hit fret number 15 on the B, pull off to that 10, 12 on the G. Same thing again. And then what you're gonna do is move your high note down a fret here to 14, that C sharp note. That C sharp adds a little bit of a Dorian kind of sound, which I like. So we should have this so far. Next, you're going to uh, come up here to frets number 17 and 15 on the B. Uh, it's a very similar lick. Uh, it's very similar lick to what you just played a second ago. It's going to use some different notes, of course, but the phrasing and the way the licks put together is the same. Okay, so here I've got 17 pulling off to 15, 16 on the G, back to 15 on the B. Then he does that two times, just like how he did this. Next, you're going to be reaching up here to fret number 20 on the B, big old stretch. 16 on the G, same thing again. And then just like how you lowered that high note last time, lower the high note here too. Go down to fret number 19 for that F sharp. That's it. So it's like this. So that whole sequence should play like this. Okay, the next lick is really cool. This is also one of the harder licks in the solo. Um, I made it make a lot more sense to myself by thinking of it as a G arpeggio. So that's exactly what he does. All that this whole lick is, other than the last little bit of it, is a G arpeggio. Uh, if you've studied a little bit about chords, then maybe you know in a G uh, triad, all that you have is the notes G, B, and D. That's the first, third, and fifth of a, of a G scale, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, this lick just outlines a G arpeggio in several different forms. I really love how Marty does this stuff. Um, a lot of times when guitar players think about arpeggios, they think about sweeps. Sweeps, bro! You know, just doing up and down stuff like you hear in every guitar center nationwide all day, every day. Uh, Marty's a lot more creative than that, and I don't know, I like how he plays these. They have some wide interval stretches, some pull-offs and stuff. Much cooler than you're just standard straight up and down kind of arpeggios. So let's check this out. Okay, so again, we're targeting G, B, and D. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what's up. 
I'm starting off here on my B string. You know, you gotta think, we're just coming out of this lick. So we're already in this position to play this next one. Uh, I'm going back up here to fret number 20 on the B, like how I was a second ago. That's that high G note. Pull off to 15. 16 on the G. Back to 15 on the B. Again, straight up G arpeggio. G, D, B, D. Then you play the next uh, little sequence of G arpeggio here. Here I did fret number, uh, what is that, 19 on the high E string, that high B note. Pull it off to fret 15. G note. Right above you on the B string is going to be that D note. Then go back to G. So that's like on the high E string I've got 19, 15, 15 on the B, back to 15 on the E. Okay, so the next one he's going to do is come up here all the way to fret number 22 for this high D note. I hope you have a guitar with good upper fret access. God bless, I love my Ibanez guitars and their sweet neck access. Huge fan of that. Makes it look like this a lot easier to play. If you're playing this on a, a, a Strat or a Les Paul, it'll be really nasty. Okay, so here's what's up. Going here to fret number 22 on the high E. My intonation is a little off, I need to adjust that. Fret number 22 on the E, pulling off to 19. That's the notes D and B, again, staying inside of our G arpeggio here. Fret 20 on the B. Then go back a note here to that 19 on your high E. After this, you're going to go right back to that 20 on your G. Then you're going to place uh, 19 right here on the G string. This is very much just a regular G arpeggio shape. So since we came up here to 22, here's what we have so far. Last note I hit right there is 21 on the D string. That's that B note again. It's really important that you do that note with your middle finger. Uh, I was initially very tempted to go like this and use the ring finger. That would be a little bit more proper fingering. Uh, but he does this slide in the next part and makes the next lick unplayable. Well, not unplayable, but miserable if you do it that way. So be sure to use your middle finger. There. Next, we're going to slide down to the next chord note, this G note. This is fret number 17 on the D string. So I've done... Really cool lick. Let me give you a close-up there again. 22 to 19. 20 on the B, 19 on the E, 20 on the B, 19 on the G, 21 on the D, sliding down to 17. After this, this lands you in uh, the root position for another G arpeggio. Here I just did, uh, what was that, 19 on the G, pulling off to 16 on the G, then back to that root note again, 17 on your D string. After you hit that note, slide down again to the next chord tone, the D note that you'll find on fret number 12 of that D string. So that whole thing is like this. Slide, slide. After this is where it breaks out of G a little bit. So just slid down here with my middle finger. You're going to go up two frets here, fret 14 on the D, 12 on the D, 11 on the D, again that's that C sharp note, little Dorian flavor, slide back to 12. So it's like, uh, after that hit fret number 14 on the G, slow whole step bend up to B right there. So let's play that whole arpeggio sequence. Now, this next lick is a little dizzying one. Um, it's not necessarily all that hard, it's just long. You know, I found this to be a memorizational battle more than a physical one. Let me just show you this little shape that he's got an outline in here. The first part of the lick is this really weird kind of diminished blues thing. 
Sounds really cool, really evil. And then the second half of the lick is just straight up the good old blues scale, so you probably know that one already. Um, here's the first shape that he outlines, just to kind of give you a road map, you know, this is where we're going to be going on this lick. <laughs> That's what he's mostly outlining in this phrase. I've got my 12 on my, or, sorry, 14 on the D string, that E note right there. 12 on the G. 15 on the G. It's that B flat note. Again, right there, sounding very much like a diminished arpeggio. Next, you're gonna have 12 on the B. It's that B note. 13 on the B string, it's a C note. And he also uses the 12 on high E string with the E note. So you have... Okay, so this next phrase, he's pretty much just like, you know, just, just burn it up and down that pattern right there. Here's how it starts off. It starts off with the high note on the G, the B flat. Okay, so I just did my pull off. 14 on the D. Walk up that pattern. So now we got 15 to 12 on the G, 14 on the D, 12 to 15 on the G, B string here we do 12, 13, 12. Again, abundance of hammer-ons and pull-offs, not a lot of picking here. Walk down the pattern, then walk all the way up it. Okay, so what we did first was Walk down, walk up, walk down. Let's try that one more time here. Starts off with a pull off on our G. We walk it down as far as we can. Walk up, walk down, walk up, walk down. After this is where it gets a little bit more bluesy, and he starts using the blues scale right here. E blues scale. Again, just to give you reference here, that's like 14 on the D. G string here, I got 12, 14, 15. B string, 12 and 15. High E string, 12 and 15. We know it, we love it. Little blues scale. Okay, so coming out of that weird diminished thing. We got this deal right here. I'm starting off just walking up that blue scale on the G string here. I do 12, 14, 15. 12 on the B, 12 on the E. Okay. After that, just descend down the blue scale. 15 on your B, pulling off the 12. All three notes on the G string here, he does 15, 14, pull off to 12, 14 on the D. Okay, so let's kind of break this up here. Starts off with the weird diminished walk up, walk down. Then blue scale. Last thing he does here is hit fret number 13 on the G, which again, that's super out of key, man, using that G sharp note right there. You know, it's totally out of key, but he bends it up to A, and that sounds cool. Okay. Like I said, more of a memorizational thing than anything. All the picking is pretty easy, lots of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Weird to memorize, though. Who writes licks like that? You know? Friedman. Okay, the very last thing you hear in the solo is that really bluesy... ...thing like that. Again, straight up, you know, pentatonic blues scale right here. Uh, this is a classic lick. You probably use licks like this in other solos. You're starting off with uh, the E and B strings here, barred on fret 12. You're just going to play that 12th E, 15 on your B, 
pulling off to 12 on the B. Notice I'm using two upstrokes right there. This helps me a lot. I go up, up, and then do that 15 on the B again. Downstroke, whole step bend. And then after that, you're gonna do four of this lick. Same idea, I'm doing 12 on the E, 15 on the B, pull off the 12 on the B, but then instead of doing that bend right here like you did before, do the bend on your 14th G. About a whole step bend. As fast as this is, even if it's not a perfect full step, who's gonna know? You know, it goes by so fast that even if you do like three quarters of a step or something, it'll sound right, you know? So shoot for a whole step. Don't worry about it if it doesn't quite make it. It'll only sound weird if you're playing really slow, you know? Okay, so we had our first one which concluded with the uh, bend on the B. Then we had the one that does the bend on the G four times. One, two, three, four. And then the last thing you're gonna do is uh, just a little variation on that. 12 on the E, 15 on the B, pulling off to 12. And then what you're gonna do is hit 14 on the G and 15 on the B at the same time and bend that G up a whole step. And it kind of slides down after that. I think that was four. Let's do it again. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And then that big raunchy bend at the end. That should take you through pretty much everything right there. All the lips that are in that great Symphony of Destruction solo. Such a cool one, dude. Uh, I've got to learn more Friedman stuff. I really want to learn um, Killing Road. I think I'll do Tornado of Souls if I'm feeling really uh, brave someday. That's a nasty solo. Uh, but yeah, Friedman puts together really good on here for us. He's got a good mix of bluesy, very metal, pentatonic stuff. And some very cool arpeggio based ideas, too. Uh, he's great, dude. Really one of the coolest players to ever come out of metal. Really weird blending of styles in his playing. Uh, I hope that helps you just love whenever that iPad battery dies as you're finishing that up. Uh, anyway, what I was saying there was I hope that helps you guys out. hope you enjoyed learning that solo. I'll be doing some other stuff like that, too. I want to learn more Friedman stuff, and I'll make some other lesson videos as well. Find me on your social media of choice. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever at Ben Eller Guitars. Ben Eller Guitars. No spaces or underscores or anything like that. Just all one word. Find me on there and uh, follow me on your social media platform of your liking. And don't forget to send me a message and we'll hook up some private one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons too. We'll work on whatever you want to talk about, whether it be theory stuff, uh, working on your technique, working on your chops, whatever. I'd love to work with you. So hit me up. I've got very reasonable rates, very flexible times, and we'll get something going on. Get your shred on, you know? But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and uh, yeah, happy shredding. Take it easy.